Well, greetings, greetings, and shalom, shalom to each and every one of you on this evening. We're blessed. Uh, Father Yah, we're thankful for him uh, giving us this day, this opportunity, another opportunity to gather together one more time, beloved, to get into his everlasting word. Amen. We're thankful for, for Father Yah. Appreciate him sending his only begotten son, Yahushua HaMashiach, that's whom the world called Jesus Christ, uh, to come down through the 40 and two generations that go to the cross, amen, to die for our sins, amen. We certainly don't want to forget uh, to honor our dear sister Miriam. The Holy Scripture said, wheresoever the gospel is preached, to make mention of the woman, amen, as a memorial. We're thankful for her taking her oil, anointing the head of our king, uh, uh, preparing him to go to the cross for the remission of your sins, my sins, sins of the world. So we're grateful that the Father has blessed us, kept us, spared us uh, throughout this day. To so Yah everlasting be the glory. And let me say this, man, uh, before we get into our teaching on tonight, I want to make sure everybody understand, make sure, amen, that you are uh, living according to the word of the everlasting Elohim. The Father tells us in his word, Yahushua said to be prepared. Amen. Amen. Be ready. That's what he said. Be you ready. Amen. I just got a, uh, on another announcement, man. We lost another family member. Uh, that's family member number six. Amen. In nearly a month's time when you lose uh, six family members at one time, that lets you know that the Most High, uh, he is calling roll call. Amen. And when he calls your name, your number, Amen. When your grace, when the measure of your grace runs out, are you ready, beloved? Think about it. Are you ready right now, this precise moment, to stand before your creator for judgment? Amen. I had a, a dear sister uh, share with me as a young fella, young fella, 30 years old. He was at work complaining of a headache, and uh, the sister said, uh, he complained of a headache, and then he just fell down right there where he was and died. You see, don't matter how old you are, doesn't matter, beloved, how young you are. Amen. The Most High is calling roll. Are you ready? Amen. To be judge of your Elohim. So, yeah, beloved, we don't have time to play. This is a very serious and a very, very dangerous a time by which we live in. We see the prophecies unfolding themselves. The Father said in the last days, man, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And then it goes on to even talk about how uh, there will be pestilence and plagues. And scripture says that children will rise against their parents. You see? So, yeah, man, man's heart has waxed cold and, uh, and uh, iniquity uh, has abound in the hearts of men. So, yes, beloved, let's uh, make sure that we are crossing our spiritual T's and dotting our spiritual I's and coming up to the standard that the Father has uh, set for us. The only thing that the Father is accepting, amen, for mankind on the earth. Are you listening tonight? Human family, the only thing that the Most High Yah is accepting is the way of holiness. That's it. Anything else outside of that, amen, the Father is not dealing with it. He's going to judge it. Matter of fact, thank you, Father. Give me Isaiah, son. Just move quick as you can. Isaiah, uh, the 35th chapter, before we get into our teaching tonight, and give me down to verse number 8. Isaiah, thank you for that precept, y'all. Uh, the 35th chapter at verse number 8. What did he say? And a highway shall be there. You see? And a highway shall be where? Shall be there. A highway shall be there. There, come on. And the way, and it should be. And a way, a highway is going to be there, and a way is going to be there. Come on. And it should be called the way of holiness. That way is going to be called what? The way of holiness. Christianity. Holiness. Islam. Holiness. Buddhism. Holiness. Hinduism. Holiness. The way of holiness. Nothing else. Nothing added to that, beloved, and nothing taken away from it. The way of holiness. That's the highway. That's the way that the King of Kings. Huh? The most high yard that have set in the earth for the human family to follow. How? 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 To follow after Israel. Because he said, go, go give me Isaiah 62 and verse number 12. Isaiah 62 and verse number 12. Come on, son. And then, then run on down the road, man, and jump on over there to Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verse number 27. What did he say there? And they shall call them. Where the, you at, son? In the book of Isaiah 62 and verse 12. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 12 says what? And they shall call them 
The holy people. Okay, see, they shall call them the Hindu people. Holy people. The Muslim people. Holy people. The Christianity people. Holy people. That's it. Nothing else. Huh? Let us cleanse ourselves from the filth and the flesh of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the sight of Yah. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Blessed and holy is he that shall take part in the first resurrection. Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. You see, that's it. See, except for a man that made peace with Yah and holiness, see, after the which no man shall see Yah. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Holiness. Why? Because the Father is holy. His word is holy. He raised up holy ministers. He calls his word holy scriptures and got a holy people and commanding the world, not asking, commanding the world uh, to do what? Be you holy, even as your father uh, with, with his what? Holy. That's it. Don't add nothing to it. Don't take nothing away from it. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse number 27. See? It's time, beloved, we got to come out of everything that's not like the Father. If it's not like him, if it didn't come from him, if he does not stamp his approval on it, amen, get rid of it. Come on, son. In the book of Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. Yes. And it's appointed to men once to die. It's appointed for you, boo, me, and the crew. Every, this got everybody. It's appointed for man to do what? Unto men once to die. Appointed for men once to die. Come on. But after this, the judgment. After this what? The judgment. After this, he's going to tickle your feet. The judgment. After this, he's going to give you a lollipop. The judgment. After this, judgment. See, that's it. That is it. You can keep running, amen, living for the devil if you want to. So many people think that they are prepared. See, is your heart, is your mind consumed with the things of Yah? Do you keep your mind fi fixated on Yahuwah? A mind that be stayed on Yah, he said, here, give it what? Perfect peace. So we want to challenge you, beloved. Stop playing with the Father. Amen. The Father sent me to tell you, stop playing with him. Let's get right. Let's be right. Let's stay right. And the only way to do that, you got to come through, amen, the only begotten son of the father, the son of the living Elohim, amen, our resurrected and soon to come king, Yahushua HaMashiach, that's whom the world is calling Jesus Christ. That's it, brothers and sisters, okay? To Yahweh last and be the glory. All right, now, let's, let's shift gears and uh, let's go over. Give me First Peter, man, chapter 4. I want to start out right there because we're going to work on tonight. Uh, I need to get you a couple of precepts uh, regarding a couple of things I want to talk about for just a brief moment. The fear of y'all because see, people just don't fear the most high no more. Hmm. Just don't fear him. No fear at all. Where's your fear? Do you fear? Do you tremble? The scripture said the devil tremble and fear. The devil believe, he, he fears, he tremble. Where's your fear? Let's find out. What did he say, son? First Peter chapter 4, pick it up at verse 17. In the book of First Peter chapter 4, verse 17. Listen at this. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. See? Judgment. It's appointed once for every man to die. After this, what? Judgment. And judgment going to begin where? At the house of God. The house of Yahuwah is, is Israel. And any and everybody that will be grafted into Israel, that's the house of Yah. That's the sanctuary of Yah. That's where he placed his glory, according to the scriptures. Are you listening? Israel is the sanctuary. Israel is his temple. See? Psalm 114, verse number two. You don't got to go there. I'm just quoting it. Israel is his sanctuary. Israel is the house of Yah. See? See? I've only come before the lost sheep of the house of who? Israel. Any Gentile that's going to be grafted in, you grafted in? You are grafted into the house of Israel. So what did he say? For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. That's right. Now listen now, because Peter, Peter's epistle is to Israel. Let me certify that. Give me first Peter. Hold that, hold that page there. 
Uh, give me First Peter, uh, first chapter, verse one. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus. See, Peter, the apostle of who? Of of Jesus Christ. Who is he talking to? To the strangers. To the strangers. That's Israel, because Israel in other people's land, Israel is the one that scattered across the four corners of the earth in other people's land. Read it again. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Bithynia. Uh huh. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the See, Father. See, elect according to the foreknowledge of Yah. Israel is the elect of Yah. Are you listening? Israel is the one that scattered. So Peter's epistle is to the house of Israel. Go back to 1 Peter, chapter number 4, pick it back up at verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. You see? Judgment is going to begin because, see, everything is to, the, to Israel, to the Jew, to Israel first, then unto the Gentile. So judgment, he's going to put it on Israel first. Come on, son. And if it first begin at us. Where? If it first begin at us. Listen to Peter the Apostle. His letter is to the house of Israel. If it first begin at us. Come on. What shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? What shall be the end of them that do not obey the what? gospel of God. That does not obey the basora. Huh? Hebrew for gospel. That does not obey the gospel. What shall be their end? What did he say? Verse 18. Now hold it. Let me get the precept for that. Let's find out what's going to be the end for them that don't obey. 2 Corinthians, 2 Thessalonians. Hold that there. 2 Thessalonians. I need uh, chapter 1. Give me that down to verse number 7. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7. The word of Yah is what? And to you who are troubled, rest with us. To you that are troubled. Come on, take your time. Clear your throat. Let's get it, let's get it together. Come and on, son. To you who are troubled, rest with us. Rest with us. Come on, son. When the master Jesus shall be revealed from heaven. With when the master Yahushua <clears throat> shall be revealed from heaven. Come on. With his mighty angels. With who? His mighty angels. With his mighty angels. Come on. In flaming fire, taking vengeance. In flaming fire, taking what? Taking vengeance on them that know, that know not God. Taking vengeance on them with flaming fire, on them that don't know the Father, don't know Abba. Come on. And that obey not the gospel of our master, Yeshua HaMashiach. You see, that's going to be the end. That's going to be the end of them that don't obey the Father. Go back over there to First Peter. Chapter 4, pick it back up at verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. That's right. And if, and if it first begin at us. If it first begin with us, come on. What shall, the end of, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Flaming fire, vengeance against them, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. That's what's going to be the end, come on. And if the righteous scarcely be saved. Uh-oh, if the righteous... Listen at the apostle. Scares. Ain't that let you know right there ain't going to be a whole lot of folk that's going to be saved. Are you in that number? If the righteous scarcely be saved, where's your fear tonight? That's one of the most scariest verses right there. In all of scripture, if the righteous scarcely be saved, it's not a lot of people going to be saved. Are you getting this? If the righteous scarcely be saved, come on. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Where then shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? You see? Read it. 19. That's good right there. Now, let me show you this. Give me 2nd Esther, son, chapter 8. 2nd Esther, chapter 8. 2nd Esther, chapter 8. I need verse 1, and then I need you to break off uh, from the bread of truth. Verse number 3. 2nd Esther, chapter 8. Verse number 1 and verse number 3. And he asked Where you at, son? You got to call it out. In the book of 2nd Esther, chapter 8, verse number 1. Mm -hmm. And he answered me saying, The Most High has made this world for many. But uh oh, the Most High, glory to his name, hallelujah, have made this world that we all see, that we're all living in. He made it for who? For many. For many. Come on. But the world to come for a few. But the world to come for how many? A few. Just a few. See? The most are not dealing with everybody. Christianity got you believing that once you believe, you say. 
All you got to do is just believe. You ain't got to repent. You ain't got to keep no commandment. All you got to do is just believe. You see? No good. Absolutely no good. One more precept, man, before we get into our teaching, because tonight we're going to work on the zodiac. You, 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 you zodiac lovers, your sign is Pisces. Let me show you something. You don't fear the father. Money around talking about you some Pisces, you some Sagittarius, you some Virgo. Huh? What's wrong with you? Y'all, y'all has nothing to do with that. All right, give me uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse number 13. Verse number 12, uh, 12, 12, and then give me verse 13 out of there. In the book of, in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, beginning of verse 12. It says what? And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. That's right. There is no end. Yes. And, me, and much study is weird, weariness of the flesh. Much study. That's why we need to get into everlasting word, because we'll find out. Amen. That y'all don't love everybody. He said, Esau, he said, Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. You see? Romans the ninth chapter, verse 13. That's what he said. Got, you got the mo got the wrong fella here. The most high Yah. All he is, he just loved. That's it. Uh-uh. Read it, son. See, we got to get it, we got to have much study. It's a weariness. Huh? Much study brings a weariness to the flesh that's so wicked and so obedient, living in all of us. Come on, son. Verse 13. Uh-huh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. See, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. You can say what you want to say. But at the end of the day, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Come on. Fear God and what keep is, his what, commandments. What, what, what you got to do? Fear God. Fear Yahuwah. Fear him. Come on. And keep his commandments. And do what? Keep his commandments. Keep them commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. It's the whole duty of man. Read it. 14. Yes. For God shall bring every work into judgment. He, every work. Everything. Whether it's good or bad, it got to be judged. Read it. With every secret thing, whether it be good With or whether it be evil. With every secret thing, whether it be what? Good or whether it be evil. See, you can run, but you can't hide. You can't hide nothing from the Father. He know what we're thinking before we think it. Isn't that, isn't that just amazing? You can hide nothing from him. He said, you make your bed up in hell, I'm there. Huh? I'm higher than heaven. Job, in the book of Job, he tells us, I'm higher than heaven. Hmm? Deeper than hell, longer than the earth, broader than the sea. Where can you go to escape this Elohim? Joel thought he can escape the father, didn't he? Didn't he think he can escape him? The father spoke to a big old fish and swallowed him up. And just mercy that he didn't allow the stomach acid of the fish to consume Jonah. Not Joel, Jonah. Yes, sir. Amen. So, yeah, man, we got to get it right, y'all. We got to get it right. And there are people dropping like flies. Just so many deaths going on each and every day. The Father is calling, amen, the human family to repent. Okay? So, now, let's get over to this teaching tonight, man, the Zodiac. I want to work on the Zodiac. Amen. We, got, we have to do this. We must do this. Go ahead and pull that image up, son. Pull that image up because uh, this is what's going on in these last days. You know, we are, we are a people. You know, we're sitting in the land of our captivity. You're keeping Juneteenth without understanding what's going on. Don't know what's going on. Juneteenth, not in the scriptures. Huh? Your enemy tried to make you feel good. Give you a little date. Huh? Give you a day off of work with pay. When you still owe 300, uh, 80, look, total of 88,560 days. That's the 246 years from 1619 to 1865. Mm -hmm. 246 years with no pay. Built this nation up. Okay, so 88,559 uh, days. Because they give you Juneteenth a day off with pay. And it's all about money. I keep telling y'all this. Huh? Walmart made their Juneteenth ice cream. <laughs> huh? <laughs> and you were just so happy. Look at you. They call it Look at you. You're so blind. 
so without a look all in the store. Oh baby, look, they got two of teeth ice cream. They call it Negro Negropolitan ice cream. Huh? Negropolitan ice cream. <laughs> huh? Not Neopolitan ice cream. Negropolitan. Yeah, you know, you know what, the, what they call it? The vanilla, the strawberry, the oh. chocolate, right? Napoleon. Huh? Napoleon. Yeah, the Napoleon ice cream. I don't even know why they named it that, but you know, I love it. It tastes yeah. good. Huh? Chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, and you you know, I don't know about you. I used to always go after the strawberry. Mm. You know, I, t- I go through the strawberry. Huh? And I know I know somebody know what I'm talking about. Cause somebody that loves chocolate, they, they work on the chocolate. Mm. They don't mess with the, the vanilla, the strawberry, but nevertheless, now they call it what kind of what they call it? Negro politics. Negro politics. Mm. Huh? See, they mock, they mock us in our face. Huh? Hey, baby, we, we gonna have a cookout. Uh, come on, let's get a couple of gallons of this of this Juneteenth ice cream. They making all kind of T-shirts, huh? And you got to walk in their store and pay for it. All this cotton we done picked. Hmm. You want to do something? Tell, tell, listen. Tell our people they no longer have to pay taxes. You get a free education. You don't have to go. You go to this school. You don't have to pay for no education. Our people struggling to pay their little, pay their little, uh, their, their, uh, their uh, what they call that? Student loan. Their student loan back. Struggling to pay their student loan back. Picked all the cotton there. Got to go purchase your T-shirt, your Juneteenth T-shirt. You see? What's going on here? Put this image up, son. I said, what is going on here? Look at this. We are, we, we are raised up, man, to help you to get these chains off of our mind. Huh? Somebody say, brother, brother, Scott, but y'all, why you seem like you, you mad? Because y'all the father is mad. You better get that, son, Ecclesiastes. Work on chapter 7, verse number 7. Ecclesiastes, see? That's why we come to get you out, amen, pull you out of the matrix of deception. He says what, son? In the, book of, in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, and verse 7. Uh-huh. Surely oppression makes a wise man mad. Ooh. What, what does oppression do? Makes a wise man mad. And the sad part about it, a lot of people, a lot of our people don't even know that they are oppressed. They, I ain't oppressed. What are you talking about? Got me a good job. I'm not oppressed. I go where I want to go. I, I, I wear fine clothes, got a nice heart, got a nice house, nice car, money in the bank. What you talking Huh? You just you oppressed in your mind. That's where the, that's where the war is now. See, take the chains off of the off of the wrist and off of the ankles, and put the chains on the mind now. You oppressed in your mind. You run around talking about you some Sagittarius, you some Virgo. Who told you that? Did y'all tell you you was a? Did y'all tell you you was a Pisces, a Taurus? Huh? Did y'all tell you that? Where did you get it from? Where did it come from? You got to get these chains off of the mind. Huh? The father said, give me, hold that there, son. Give me Psalm chapter 11, verse number 11. Let's find out. Because everybody thinks that the true God of Israel, he's just so soft and he never gets angry. He's not mad about nothing. When we down here 400 years, man, because of his anger, because of his wrath. What did he say? In the book of Psalm 7 and verse 11. Uh-huh. God judges the righteous and Mm -hmm. God is angry with the wicked every day. He's angry. Angry. When is he angry? Just once a year. Every day. Every now and then. Every day. Every day. God Almighty, Yahuwah is angry with the wicked. When? Every day. You see? Every day. Every day. Go back to where we were. Read it one more time. I don't think that they got it because seven, uh, a lot of times the scripture is a representation of completion and we need to get completed in our hearts and completion in our minds. Amen. That a wise man, read it. In the book of Psalm 7 and verse No, 11. no, no. Ecclesiastes 7 Ecclesiastes. and 7. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 7. Broken on all of these seven. Psalms chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 7. Come on, son. Surely oppression makes a wise man mad. See, he didn't say maybe. Might. What did he say? Surely. 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 It does what? Makes a wise man mad. Yes, that's right. I'm mad. I'm, I'm mad about stuff. Because I know what's going on. See? You get you get a watchman, you put your place up in the watchman tower. Huh? 
He take you up higher than everybody else to see, to get a, to, 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 to get a full view of the full landscape. Hmm? Why you think he put us on the mountaintop of Great Babylon, the capital? Uh, Washington, D.C., we're on the mountaintop. As he told John, come up hither. Revelation chapter 4, John, just come on up hither. And John said, he put me in the spirit. Come on up hither. See, you can you can, you, 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 you get a wide range view of everything. You can see all the landscape up on the mountaintop. See, he said what, son? Surely oppression makes a wise man mad. It makes a wise man mad, angry, furious, full of wrath. Are you getting this? Because you see, our people just love oppression. Hey, you ain't got to go there. Our people just, our people trust in oppression. Okay, but we have to get set free. Get our minds set free. Get our minds released. The chains are off of the ankle. The chains are off of the wrist. But now it's about the war and the chains that's on our minds. All right, pull me back up, son. All right, now let's go on over to, uh, let's get on over to, uh, Go ahead, let me see. Go ahead and pull that up. Go ahead and pull that up. Pull it up, son. Pull it up. All right. I, I want to go ahead on and get into this teaching tonight uh, because some of our people, many of our people, you're into zodiac signs. Huh? Yes. Who told you you was a Leo? Because I used to believe the same thing. All of us did. They even made a song about it from a group called the Floaters. They made us a song called Float On. Hi, my name is Ricky, and I'm a Sagittarius. Huh? Ricky, you're wicked. Spiritually blind. Spiritually unaware, just like all of us once was. But now the Father has taken the scales of darkness off of our spiritual eyes, and we can see everything now. We can see and, and so, 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 so now that we can see, it's our job to help others to see that there's a God. Amen. His name is Yahuwah. Huh? Bahashim. In the name of Yahusha Hamashiach, he's coming with fury and wrath against all of his enemies. If you're, if you're some zodiac keeper, you keep your zodiac. Where did it come from? Do you know? Who told you to be some cancer? Virgo. Pisces. Who told you to be these things? Did the father do it? Remember now. Remember. There it is. I will be like unto the most high. That's what Satan said. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 14. You see? Who told you? Who raised up this whole zodiac thing with, uh, with regards to astrology? Who did that? Look at look look at the next look at the next verse down there. Though thou though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, who was the eagle? You remember when they made that moon that that moon that so called moon landing? Because they never went there for real. They never went there. They never went there. A major deception. You can research it. You will find that that I am telling the truth. Huh? What's that fella named Neil Armstrong? He come off of there. He posted. His, what, what, what did he say? The eagle has landed. One giant step for for who? Man. One one giant step for man. man. And another for mankind. And another for mankind. Something like that. Yeah. He ain't took no step. Nothing. Took a step into a a, a, a Hollywood Universal studio <laughs> and created it. That's it. Go ahead, let green screen. No, I don't think they had green screen back then. They did something. They did something and they pulled it off. Huh? And they got a, if you look at the images, they got a flag. United States flag. And the flag is standing straight up, looking like it's blowing in the wind. Well, hold up, wait a minute. If it how, how it look like it's blowing in the wind when there ain't supposed to be no oxygen in space. Huh? Well, you got all this mask on. You know, I got this helmet on, the big oxygen tank on your back. Cause you, because you need to breathe oxygen, that's what you say. Saying that there is no wind, is that right? Mm -hmm. But the flag is blowing in the wind. See how Satan made a fool of him? See, thou, see, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, 
That's why the mascot of this place is the eagle. And though thou set thyself amongst what? The stars. See? Amongst the stars. Thence. See? There will I bring thee down, saith who? Saith Yahuwah. And the Father tells us, man, in the Holy Scripture, Proverbs chapter 31, chapter uh, 3, verse 31, he says, envy not thy oppressor and choose what? None of his ways. So the question remains, who told you to be a Capricorn? Who told you that you was a Virgo? Sagittarius. Who told you you was a Libya? Or what, is it, what, what is it? A, a Libra? Scorpio, mm. Taurus the bull. Yeah. Where did you get it from? See, you got it from your oppressor. You got a graven image all around about your neck. Look at you. Look at you. Just look at yourself. Capricorn, look at yourself. Just look at yourself. Capricorn, see? Some of you, you got a graven image of a Capricorn at home on your fireplace. On your desk at work, you got a graven image around your neck of your zodiac sign. Huh? Who told you to be these things? And you talking about you going to be in y'all's kingdom. You see? There's work to do. There's work to do. So tonight is a night of deliverance. Let's get into the word of the Father. Come on, Ephesians chapter 5, man. Get me over there to uh, Ephesians chapter 5. I need 8. Pull me back up. I need, I need 8 and I need uh, through verse 11. Ephesians chapter 5. Let's get into the word of the Father. Amen. Don't spectate. We want you to participate. Tonight is a night of deliverance. See, first we got to get an understanding. And once we get that understanding and we see our error, where we are wrong, because he said all scripture is inspired by Yahuwah. See, it's for correction. See, it's for instructions. It's for reproof. That means to rebuke us, to show us our wrong. And it is profitable what? For doctrine. It's good, it's good for teaching. It is, it is, it is for dogma, doctrine, teaching. Once I, once I see that I've been in error, I have to now receive the correction, receive the, the reproof, the rebuke. Yeah. The correction comes. Now we give you instructions on what to do. And then you can get set free. There were, listen, some of you, you're going through and experiencing things in your life, not aware that all the time, because, because see, you have attached yourself to something the father told us to come out of. You have, you have envied and you have chosen the ways of your oppressor. To which he says, learn not the ways of who? The heathen. In Jeremiah, the chapter, chapter, learn not the ways of the heathen. All of us, brothers and sisters, all of us, at some point since we've been down in this place, have learned the ways of the heathens. But now the father is preparing the house of Israel for his return. But we have to get ourselves right. We have to receive the correction, receive the instruction, receive the reproof, receive the rebuke, and then repent and turn from it. Then we can close up that gap. Because Satan, the scripture says, give me that, son. Just give me that. Hold that. I need that. I need that. Revelation chapter 12. And give me down to verse number uh, 10. I need that. Because people got to understand that Satan goes before the father day and night accusing the brethren. The greatest snitch in the history of the human family is Satan. Watch this. Watch this now. In the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse number 10. All right. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength into the kingdom of our God and the power of his Messiah. That's right. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our hold God. It, hold it, hold it, hold it. Get the verse before that so we can find out who is the accuser. I want to work it uh, by context. Come on. Verse 9. Uh -huh. Verse 9. Yes. And the great dragon was cast out. And the great dragon was what? Cast out. Was cast out. Come on. That old serpent. Called, that old serpent called what? Called the devil. Called the devil. Come on. And Satan. And Satan. Come on. Was deceived the whole world. What did he do? Deceived the whole world. Deceived the entire world. Come on. He was cast out into the earth. He was cast out where? Into the earth. He's in the earth, roaring as a lion, 
going to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. Come on. And his angels were cast out with him. And his angels were cast out with him. One third, amen, of the host of heaven, the angels. He deceived them first. Is that right? Mm -hmm. He had to deceive them first for them to follow him. And then all of them was cast out in the earth. Come on, son. Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Messiah. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Now has come salvation. What else? Come salvation, what else? And strength. And strength. And the kingdom of our God. And the kingdom of Yahuwah HaMashiach. And the power of his Messiah. And the power of his Messiah. Come on. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down with you. That's Satan. That's Satan. The accuser of the brethren. Who's the brethren? The Israelites. Israel. The, uh, that's why Yahushua said, he says, uh, you haven't done it unto me, huh? but if you done it unto the least of these, my brethren. The Israelites, come on. Which accused them before God day and night. Now see, Satan go before the Father day and night accusing the brethren. Are y'all getting this tonight? Accusing the brethren. And, and one accusation is that they say they love you, but how come they're participating in astrology and zodiac signs? Go back to Ephesians chapter 5, pick it up at verse number 8 through verse 11, and let's work it out. For, in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 8. Uh-huh. For you were sometimes darkness, but now you are light. For you were sometimes darkness, but now you are light. light. In, the, in the master. See, we were in darkness, y'all. We was in darkness. He pulled us out of darkness and gave us fellowship with him in the marvelous light. That's what the apostle Peter said. What did he say, sir? Take yeah. it from the top. For you were sometimes darkness, yes. But now are ye light in the in the master? That's right. Walk as children of light. Now walk how? As children of light. All of us walk like children of light. Come on. For the fruit of the spirit, is, for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and See, righteousness. The fruit of the spirit, the fruit of Yahuwah. because Yahuwah is a spirit, and they that worship him got to worship him, worship him in spirit and in what truth, and in truth. See, they serve the father just being sincere. You have to serve him in sincerity and truth. Pursuant to Joshua, chapter 24, verse 14. And uh, in, in 1 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 7, verse 8. We got to serve him in sincerity and truth. You cannot partake in zodiac signs and think you're going to be in Yah's kingdom. And this is why a lot of people got strongholds and so many uh, uh, satanic things going on in their lives is because Satan has gone before the father day and night accusing the brethren. Why is he there accusing the brethren? Because he knows that Yah is so holy, so righteous, he don't want to allow anybody to just break his law, statutes, and commandments. So he works in the earth to deceive, to gain access to your life. Read it, son. Verse 10. Verse 9 says what? Verse 9. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness. And See, Yah is in all goodness. Come on. And righteousness. And Yah is in all righteousness because he's a righteous Elohim. And truth. And what else? And truth. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. And truth. You see? Did Yah the Father tell anybody to participate in astrology and zodiac signs? If anyone mm -hmm. says he did, that's a lie. In the book of Isaiah 47 and 13. Says what? Thou art worried in the multitude of thy counsels. Uh huh. Let now the astrologers and the stargazers and the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from, from these things with that, that shall come upon thee. Read it clearly. One more time. Thou art worried in the multitude of thy counsels. Yes. Let now the astrologers. Let not. No, let now. Let now the astrologers. Come on. The stargazers. The stargazers. The monthly prog prognosticators. Uh huh. Stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. See? They can't save you. See, can't save you. Your Sagittarius false pagan God cannot save you because these are Greek mythical pagan gods. I want you to get an understanding tonight. I say it again. These are Greek mythical pagan false gods. When you got that graven image of a Capricorn, when you have that graven image of a Capricorn on your desk at work, hanging from your hanging from your from your rearview mirror in your car, 
on your nightstand at home, on your fireplace at home, you have now partake, amen, in a false god. And Yah is angry with the wicked every day. Continue to read. What verse you at? Verse number 10. Come on. Proving what is acceptable unto Back them. in Ephesians chapter 5, pick verse it up at verse number, number pick it up at verse 9 and read it out through verse 11. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness. That's right. And righteousness and truth. Uh-huh. Proving what is acceptable unto the master. We have to prove what is acceptable to who? The master. Who? See, what, what does the father accept? We have to prove what is acceptable. We're here to tell you that the father does not accept zodiac signs. Come on, son. Verse 11. Yes. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Have no fellowship with who? The unfruitful works of darkness. Have no fellowship, brother. Are you listening? Have no fellowship yes. with the fruits of who? With the unfruitful works you of see? darkness. With the unfruitful works mm -hmm. of darkness. But rather the reproof. father has fruit, righteous fruit, holy fruit. Satan has wicked, unrighteous fruit. Zodiac signs is unrighteous fruit of darkness. They, they give Satan access to your life. Sometimes, not all the time, but in some occasions, some sicknesses are upon people's body because they are partaking in un, unrighteous uh, fruit of what? Of wickedness. Unrighteous fruit of what? Darkness. You see? This is where sometimes the spirit of infirmity, meaning the spirit of sickness, invades the human body because Satan has gone before the father day and night accusing the father that you are a zodiac sign keeper. You are a graven image keeper in Capricorn, Sagittarius, Pisces. You got the painting on your wall, amen, in your basement. You got a picture in your wallet. You got it on your phone. You went to a you went to a zodiac sign conference. Hmm? You 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 belong to the Pisces club. And y'all all get together and have food and eat and laugh and talk and don't even know that your gathering is based upon the foundation and based on the rock of Satan. See, we come to set you free. That's what's going on here. We're just trying to set you free to give you the understanding of your mistake that you have made through the deception of Satan, working through the Esau Edomites. Uh -huh. Why? Because the Greeks are the one that raised up this wickedness before their king, Satan, the Greeks. And let me show you something about the Greeks. Give me, give me second Maccabees. Come on, man, make haste. First Maccabees, chapter one and verse number nine. No. First Maccabees. Thank you, Yahuwah. Give me, man, over there the first Maccabees, chapter number nine and verse chapter number one, verse number nine. Let's get some information here. What did he say? In the book of first Maccabees, chapter one and verse nine. Uh-huh. And after his death, they put crimes upon themselves. After his death, who? The death of Alexandria the Great. They taught us about Alexandria the Great when you went to high school. Huh? Come on. After his, after his death, they put crowns upon, them, upon themselves. Uh-huh. So did the sons after many years. Yes. And the evils were multiplied in the earth. Hold it. The what? The evils were, were multiplied in the earth. When the Greeks, meaning the Edomites, ascended to world dominance as a superpower on the earth. See, 333 BC, 300 plus years before the coming of Hamashiach, whom the world called Jesus Christ, 300 plus years before they came, 333 BC, the Greeks rose to, 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 to become an empire a superpower on the earth. But when they rose, something happened or something took place in the earth. What happened? Read it again. And after his death, there 
They all put crowns upon themselves. Yes. So did their sons after them many years. Yes. And the evils were, were multiplied in the earth. And then evils were multiplied in the earth. Mm. Evils were multiplied in the earth. Are y'all getting this? Give me second Mac, man. Second Mac chapter four. Give me 13 through 15. Second Mac chapter four, uh, verse 13 through verse 15. Second Maccabees. Chapter number four, verse 13 through verse 15. Let's get this now. Come on. In the book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 13, chapter four, verse 13. All right. Now, such was the height of Greek fashion and increase. Of Take your time, son. Read it clearly. Take your time. Now, such was the height of Greek fashion. Now, such was the height of what? Greek fashion. Now, if you go back and read the chapter carefully, which you will find out, that's talking about the Olympics. They will have the games. Because Athens was in Greece. Are y'all getting this? And them games still going on the earth to this very day. And when you read it there, what you will find out is they were exercising. So from which the, from, listen, from which the, the Greek word gym that comes from gymnos, which simply means to exercise naked. Wonderful. That's why when you go to the gym, everybody there have naked. They would practice, I mean, they will, they will have their games and perform the tossing of the discus, the throwing of the javelin, the race, the, the raiding and running down the track as fast as you can. They would have those games and they did them naked. Why? Because evil has multiplied in the earth when they rose to power. And Jerusalem, see, Israel, Jerusalem, the man over there named Jason that's supposed to be uh, adhering to and watching over the laws of Yah begin to begin to bow to the to the to the Hellenized. Helen, see, he was Hellenized. Our people became Hellenized, which means to adhere or assimilate into the lifestyle of another people group. Just like we've been Hellenized here in these United States of America. We dress like them, talk like them, keep their holidays, everything. Huh? We weren't walking around, we was in our land with a suit and tie on. We dress like them. Our men keep uh, their faces bare, no hair on the face. Why? Because we've been Hellenized. Same thing that went on back then, the same thing that's going on now. Continue to read it. Verse 13, now, now such was the height of Greek fashion. Now such was the height of Greek fashion, the way of life. Come on. It's not talking about the clothes you got on. The way of life. Come on. An increase of heathenish manners. An increase of heathenism. Hmm. Heathenistic manners. Heathenistic mindset. Heathenistic lifestyle to which Jeremiah chapter 10 says, learn not the ways of the heathens. See? Solomon, the wise man, the book of Proverbs, chapter three, verse 31. He says, he says, uh, trust not. He says, he says, he says, envy not and choose none of the ways of who? Your oppressor. Read it. Through the exceeding profaneness of Jason. The through, the, through the exceeding profaneness of who? Of Jason. See, you got to be careful, man, because it's our people that want to cling on to the assimilation, the lifestyles and the heathenistic ways of your oppressor. A lot of our people are like that. They sit in leadership positions. They're your politicians and watch that. Some of them, even in the pulpit, don't want you to come out. Want to make you continue to keep Christmas and every other thing. Every other holiday. Not holy day, but holidays. Read it. That ungodly wretch and no high priest. Uh-huh. That ungodly wretch that Jason was. You ain't no high priest of Yahuwah. Huh? Come on. Verse 14. It says what? That the priests had no courage to serve anymore at the altar. But See, the priests, the holy priests of Yah, they didn't have any courage no more. Because the Greeks threatened it. If you keep the laws, if you keep uh, the statutes, the commandments, if you keep Sabbath, if you keep the feast days, you will be terminated. You will be executed. You will be killed. That's what that's talking about. Read that one more time. That the priests had no courage they to serve. They had no courage to serve who? Anymore at the altar. At the altar, come on. But despising the temple. But they despised the temple of Yah. 
and neglecting the sacrifices. And they neglected the sacrifice, the righteous sacrifices. Hey, see, Peter the Apostle said, we offer that unto him spiritual sacrifices. Come on, son. Hasten to be partakers of the Hasten unlawful Hasten quickly to be partakers of who? Of the unlawful allowance in the place of, of the unlawful allowances of where? In the place of exercise. In the place of what? Exercise. That's the gymnasium right there where they was naked. They said, man, you can get naked and walk around in there. Our people are here to it and doing the same thing now. Come on, son. After the game of discus. After the game, I told you, after the game of discus. See, they was keeping the Olympic games back then. Come on. Verse 15. Says what? Nets not setting by the honors of their fathers. That's what that's the problem right there. Our people was doing it then, they're doing it now, not setting by the honors of our fathers. See? The way of life, the way of holiness that y'all give to the Israelites. Come on. But liking the glory of the Grecians. But liking the glory of who? The Grecians. Of the Grecians. Liking the glory of America, of the Americans. See? Come on. Verse 16. That's it right there. Now, uh, some put this up for me. Put this up for me. Go ahead and put this image up. Put that image up. Because, see, that's what's going on there. That's exactly what's going on. See? Let me let me let me let me explain a couple of things. When you are some Aquarius, Aquarius is paying homage to Grammony, Grammony of immortality. Grammony is a pagan false uh, Elohim, a pagan false wicked uh, Grecian uh, pagan god. Grammony of immortality. Pisces. It's the symbol of what? Two fishes, which pays homage to who? To Aphrodite, the goddess, and Eros. See? Aphrodite and Eros is connected to Pisces, which are the goddess or the goddesses of love, sex, and fertility. But you're walking around with a Pisces all around your neck. Aries huh? is depicted by the symbol of a ram. Pays homage to the God of war. Yah is angry with that. Give me Exodus, son. Uh, chapter 19 and verse number 3. Chapter 15, verse 3. See? You to run around talking about you some Aries. I think they got a comedian out there. His name Aries. Who gave him that name? He don't know what's going on. He got to repent and come out of that. What did he say, son? Yah's a man. Where you at? You got to call out where you at? In the book of Exodus 15 and verse 3. Yes. Yah is a man of war. See, Yahuwah is what is he? A man of war. No, Aries is a, is, is a man of war. Yah. Aries is a man of war now. Yah. Yah is a man of war. Are you listening? Is that it? Yahuwah is his name. Yahuwah, there it is right there, is his name. No, Aries is his name. Yahuwah. Aries. Yahuwah. You see? You see? This is why we got to break these chains of oppression off of our spiritual minds, y'all. See, you run around talking about you some toy depicted by the bull. See, that pays homage to Zeus. Huh? The god, the pagan, a Greek god, Zeus. Gemini. You're paying homage to the to the to the uh to the goddess uh, Castor and Pollux. See, uh, that is Zeus transformed and, 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 and transforms them. Zeus comes along and supposedly transforms them into the Gemini star. See, the God is cast starting the God, the God is Palat. You said, I'm a cancer. Cancer is depicted by a crab. And we know in the scripture that crabs are unclean in the sight of Yahuwah. See? Sent by who? Sent by the goddess Hera uh, to distract Hercules. These are all Greek mythical pagan gods. Leo the lion. See, we already know that Satan desires to be like unto the most high. Revelation chapter 5 verse 5 says, says they, uh, get that and read that out so they make sure, that, so they, they would know that I'm not just making this stuff up. See, Revelation chapter 5 verse 5, let's see. Let's see, because see, uh, Leo the lion, and people proud of that. You born in the month of July. Huh? I used to be just as wicked and blind, all happy. Talking about, yeah, I'm a Leo. 
Huh? What did he say, sir? In the book of Revelation 5, verse 5. Yes, sir. One of the elders said unto me, uh -huh. Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. The lion. Weep not, beloved, the lion of the tribe of Judah. The lion of the tribe of Yehuda. Judah is Greek. Yehuda is Hebrew. Are you listening? Who is the, who is the lion of the tribe of Judah? Hamashiach is. Yahusha Hamashiach is coming to deliver his people from out of this oppression and captivity. But you got to get right in the sight of Yahuwah. See? Read it one more time. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Not Leo. Not Leo. Leo is not going to do anything for you or for me. Amen. But have us, through the deception of Satan, cast into hell fire. That's it. That's all. That, that, that is the destiny amen, of Satan through Leo. Through any of these uh, pagan uh, so-called uh, 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 zodiac sign, amen. Virgo, Virgo is depicted by a woman, the goddess Astria. That's Virgo. Lib uh, Libra, the goddess uh, that holds the scales. Uh, goddess Themis, the goddess of justice. Are you understanding this? Libra is, 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 is supposed to be the goddess of justice. You see? Scorpio. Uh, Orion. 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 What did it say? They say, I will be like unto who? The Most High Yah. Give me Amos, son. Chapter uh, 5. Give me down there at the verse number 8. Amos chapter 5. Give me verse 8. And then jump on down at the verse number 10. Amos, the fifth chapter, verse number 8. And then give me verse 10. We're working on Scorpio. See, listen, listen. Uh, uh, you got one that's the crab. Cancer is the crab. Scorpio uh, is, 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 is the scorpion. These are unclean uh, animals or unclean uh, 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 creatures that's named in the scripture that the father tells us not to eat. But yet you run around talking about you some Scorpio. See, I'm a cancer. Unclean. And the scripture said, touch not. Taste not. Handle not. See? The unclean. It's all unclean in the sight of the Father. What you got, son? In the book of Amos, chapter 5, verse number 8. Uh-huh. Seek him that makes the seven stars in Orion. Seek him that makes, that makes the seven stars. And now you go over to Revelation, chapter 1, verse 5, and then it talks about there the seven spirits. Or the spirits are the seven stars, or the stars, uh, a.k.a., uh -huh, in the way of righteousness, is referring to the angels. You see? But Satan uh, takes this Scorpio, and it's pertaining to uh, Orion, a star. Why? Because Satan said, I would be like unto the Most High. See, always trying to copy and do what the Most High does but utilizes it, amen, for the purpose of deception and to deceive. And I just thank the Father for what Yahushua said about Nathaniel. Behold, Nathaniel, an Israelite in whom there is no guile. Beautiful. And that's what we got to become now. We got to become that. Uh, behold, Nathaniel, an Israelite in whom there is no guile, no deception. Read it, son. Seek him that makes the seven stars. Yes. And Orion and turns the shadow of death into and who? And Orion. And Orion. Come on. And turns the shadow of death into and the morning. And turns the shadow of death to what? Into the morning. Into the morning. Read it. And makes the day dark with night and calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out upon the face of the earth. Yes, sir. That's that's the only one that can do that is Yah. That's it. Yah is his name. Yah is who? Is his name. I told you. Yah is his name. Give me verse 10 out of there. Verse 10. Yes. They hate him that rebukes in the gate. Yes, yeah, see, there it is. People get angry with me. And they They hate me. They get angry with me. Why? Because we just bring in the word of Yah. That's for correction, instructions, and for reproof, for rebuke. Not to, not to tear you down, but for what purpose? To build you up. 
But what did he say? Pick it up at the top, verse 10. They hate him that, that rebukes in the gate. Uh-huh. And they abhor him that speaks uprightly. And they, and they hate him that speaks uh, the way of righteousness, that speaks uprightness. To tell you we got to get right, we got to be right, we got to stay right. Right? Sagittarius. Pull that, pull that image back up. Sagittarius uh, is the product basically of Zeus. Sagittarius is, is also... Uh, uh, working with Zeus. See? There it is. Sagittarius. Working along with Zeus. And so let's, let's, let's be clear tonight, beloved. Brothers and sisters, let's be clear tonight. If you are participating in zodiac signs, astrology, this is all witchcraft. Witchcraft is simply, amen, demonic entities that fights to, to, to exalt itself above the things of the Most High. That is the intent of a witch, a person operating with a witchcraft spirit. It's Satan behind them trying to exalt itself against authority. That's what Satan did. He tried to exalt itself against authority. So the Holy Scriptures is the rule. Huh? which y'all have distributed. It is the authority here in the earth. And so you have agents, agents that work to bring you into zodiac signs, astrology, all different forms of witchcraft, sorcery, psychics, all of it is just the same. Witchcraft. Now, you can be set free tonight. You can be set free, beloved. Pull me back up. I say you can be set free. If you have participated in zodiac signs, listen very carefully. I want to give you instructions tonight. I want to give you righteous instructions tonight whereby you can be delivered and close up the hedge because the scripture says in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, chapter 10, verse 7, he that diggeth a ditch Huh? shall fall into it and he that breaketh the hedge a serpent shall enter and bite you but you can close up the hedge through your repentance tonight so if that's you if you keep unto yourselves and participate in zodiac signs maybe astrology maybe you go and get palm readings any of it, sorcery. You go visit a psychic. You can close up that gap tonight. Right there where you are, my brother, my sister, I want you to repeat after me. Father, I come to you in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. I come to you saying, Father, I am sorry. And I repent now. I did not know. I was not aware, but now that the truth have come unto me, I thank you because you said in your word that truth shall make you free and whom the son of God sets free shall be free indeed. Now that I've come to this knowledge, as I repent, I will work as according to the fruit of righteousness. Everything that I have, whether it be a graven image, whether it be a photo, a picture, a chain around my neck, anything in my job, anything in my car, in my home that is in relation to zodiac signs, I will gather it and I will throw it in the trash. And now, come on, hang in there with me. Repeat these words because your words are powerful. And now, I renounce. You have to say this. I renounce every agent of darkness, every wicked and defiled spirit that has had me in captivity according to zodiac signs, according to sorcery, psychic readings, palm readings, any form of witchcraft. I now renounce every spirit that have gained access to my life. And now I command 
by the authority of Yahusha HaMashiach for you to exit my life. You have no more right, no more authority over my life. You now have no more accusation. And now I ask you, Father, to allow the blood of Yahusha HaMashiach to wash me and to cleanse my sins in the name of Yahusha. I pray now and ask you to lift every generational curse that have come upon my lineage as according, as according to my behavior. You said in your word, the sins of the forefathers will come upon the iniquity of the fathers to the third and fourth generation. But I receive the blessing of the blood of Yahushua to wash me, to cleanse me, and to make me whole. I ask this prayer and believe it by faith that your eye is upon the righteous and your ear is open to my cry. I receive salvation. I receive deliverance. I receive every chain, every yoke, every fetter, every stronghold pulled down, now broken and destroyed. And I claim the victory in Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen. And amen again. To y'all everlasting be all of the glory, all of the glory, all of the glory. My beloved brother and sister, if you prayed that prayer and you believe that in your heart, and now you are godly sorry. The scripture says you got to be godly sorry in your heart unto repentance. All right? Now, your next step is, now that you've prayed that prayer and you believed it in your heart, he says that he says that we believe in the heart unto righteousness and with confession of the mouth we'll confess unto salvation, which simply means unto deliverance. Okay? Now, go out, go throughout your house, collect everything that has something to do with a zodiac sign, something to do with sorcery, palm reading, any of it. Go collect it. When you get to your job, if you got something at your workplace, in your desk, on your desk, anywhere in your home, anywhere in your car, if you have purchased zodiac sign materials for your children, get rid of it, get, gather all of it, throw it in the trash. Are you listening? Are you listening? If you belong to a Zodiac club, you now cancel and terminate your membership with that club. Are you listening? These are the things that you have to do. You see, you can't just say, I'm sorry, forgive me, Father, but then you still keep these things attached to your life. You have to get rid of them and throw them in the trash. All right, y'all bless you all. We just thank you uh, for tuning in tonight. We appreciate everybody. We pray that this has been a blessing. Amen. And uh, fruitful understanding have come forth unto you. We thank the Father, amen, for this teaching on tonight. Let us get ready to close with a word of prayer. Eternal Father, we thank you. We bless you. We exalt you. We magnify you. We adore you. Thank you for your word tonight. Thank you that your word is quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. We pray tonight, Father, that every chain yoke stronghold is pulled down, broken, destroyed out of the lives of your people. Thank you, Father, y'all, to wash, to cleanse, to build them up now. We thank you, Father, and believe by faith that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. You said in your word you will, you will condemn every tongue that rises against us. You said not even a dog can wag his tail, can wag his tongue against Israel. So, to, so, so tonight, Father, bless your people. Restore your people. Give them peace of y'all. The joy that surpasses all understanding. Eternal King and allow that joy to keep the heart and the mind. We thank you today. We believe you by faith that we claim the victory now, which is in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. And together all of Israel said amen and amen again. Y'all bless you all, brother, sister. We appreciate you tuning in and hanging out with us on tonight. You can reach out to us, 301-232-8668. Uh, is the number. If you have any questions, any concerns, reach out to us on that number. Y'all bless you all. We love you all. We bid you Godspeed and we say shalom, shalom to you. Amen.